with a population of about 165,000. Lagos de Moreno is located in the Los Altos region of Jalisco, and it is the sixth largest city in the state, which sits within the macro region of the Bayo, one of the most highly developed areas in Latin America. Lagos de Moreno is occasionally known as the Athens of Jalisco, owing to the numerous writers and poets who were born here. A classic postcard is the old bridge, made with pink quarry and a beautiful design with arcs that embellish the entrance to the old side of town. The main square, called Jardín de los Constituyentes, is a great place to walk around and soak in the vibe. Right in front, you will find Nuestra Señora de la Asunción, the city's main church, whose Baroque style is absolutely mind-blowing. not to mention the sacred relics that are inside. Speaking of stunning churches, the Templo del Calvario seems like a building that was taken out of ancient Rome with its majestic stairways Tuscan columns, and marvelous sculptures. The origins of Lagos de Moreno date to its founding as Pichichitlan by Ahnuvik in about 1028 BCE. Then the city served as the capital for the Chichimecatlatli fiefdom in the 12th century. Semi-nomadic Guachichiles occupied the valley and dominated an extensive area stretching from present-day San Juan de los Lagos to southern Coahuila, before the colonization of Mexico began. Indigenous cultures thrived in the area, with notable pre-Hispanic architecture being established at Rincón de Mesa, Soceda, and El Magui. After the fall of the Aztec empires, explorers set out to explore the western frontier of the Bayo. The Spanish expansion in Nueva Galicia was slowed down by several tribes in the vicinity, such as the semi-nomadic Chichimecas and the Guachichiles. To the east of Pichichitan, the Guamares inhabited the Guanajuato area, and to the west, the Zacatecos. The Zacateco Cuadillo, the chiefs Chiconaki and Custique, along with the Chichimecas, struck down multiple Spanish invasions from 1550 to 1590 in the well known Chichimeca War. However, encomenderos gradually occupied the Bayo. The first Spaniard to build a hacienda in the Laguense Valley was Don Diego de Barra. Even so, in 1551, a group of Chichimecas attacked his ranch, La Soceda and San Antonio, and killed all his animals. The constant raids in the area made for the time being settling the Lagos region impossible. After decades of constant combat and raids, the first Spanish authorities of the region were appointed. As such, on March 31st of 1563, Villa de Santa Maria de los Lagos was founded by Martel, Cuenca, and Captain Don Pedro de Anda, along with about 72 Spanish noble families and their servants and slaves. The settlement and its surroundings became quite appealing to ranchers. By 1600, around 20,000 head of cattle were active in the Lagos Valley, 
facilitating the eventual creation of the Chariria style rodeo. The town continued to grow steadily into the 17th century, benefiting from the general prosperity of the golden age of the Spanish Empire. In 1615, a new jail was inaugurated, and 1621 saw the construction of a third parish temple with a tower that would be completed by 1685. Religious buildings were created often during this period. The convent of the poor Capuchins of St. Joseph was founded, and the construction of the parish church of Our Lady of the Assumption and the temple of Our Lady of the Rosary began during this time. Santa Maria de los Lagos, like the rest of New Spain, underwent rapid political change in the early 1800s. The lawyer Francisco Primo de Verdad y Ramos spoke to Spanish authorities advocating for Mexican independence. He died under mysterious circumstances in the dungeon of the Mexico City Trustee Building. In the initial phase of the war, Father Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla visited Santa Maria de los Lagos and provided religious services there, and recruited some families for the fight against the forces of the Spanish Viceroy. In 1823, the Convenio de Lagos, the Agreement of Lagos, was signed in Santa Maria by Nicolas Bravo, Pedro Celestino Negrete, and Louis Quintana. Establishing the free and sovereign state of Jalisco. On March 27, 1824, Santa Maria was given the title of city. Then in 1829, the city was renamed as Lagos de Moreno in, in memory of insurgent general Pedro Moreno, a founding father of Mexico who led forces against Spanish authorities in the Mexican War of Independence. During the Reform War, Lagos de Moreno changed hands between liberal and conservative forces multiple times until an eventual liberal victory in 1861. During the Mexican Revolution in the 1910s, residents of Lagos de Moreno like Mariano Azuela and Francisco Guerrero Ramirez joined the fighting. In the subsequent Cristero War, the nearby Mesa Redonda was the site of a battle between federal troops and rebel forces. In 1963, Lagos de Moreno celebrated the 400th anniversary of its founding. In recent times, the city has received several important titles. It has been named an area of historical monuments by the National Institute of Anthropology and History in 1989 a World Heritage Site on the Camino Real Tierra Adentro by UNESCO in 2010 and declared a Pueblo Magico within Mexico. The arts flourished in the city during the later half of the 19th century, but this literary boom decreased somewhat after the Mexican Revolution, especially during the 1940s. Recently, Lagos de Moreno has become an important cultural and tourist destination thanks to its rich history and architecture, some of which still stands from the 17th century. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I have many more videos of this part of Mexico in the playlist that is linked in the description below this video. You'll also find a link to another playlist of when I bicycled through Mexico. That was part of a larger trip, bicycling through Latin America. I've also bicycled through Eastern Africa and Central and Eastern Europe, and I have playlists for all those countries that I've bicycled through, available on this very same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. Alternatively, if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I've been and all the things that I got to see and do, I have that interactive map available over on my website, followthehumoftheearth.com.
where you can click on the different locations and see all the blog posts and videos that I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures through Mexico and beyond, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.